A few months ago, Curious Mark did a repair video of his 3300A HP function generator. He had problems with transistors in part of the frequency generation circuit that is contained in the oven. Well, I decided to pull my 3300A out of storage and give it the once over and just check everything out. Power supply seemed good and I then just proceeded to test the test point for the oven which is on the collector of this output transistor here. And I had noticed that the oven didn't seem to be getting warm and the test verified that. There are two transistors in the oven control circuit. There's this one, Q7, which is outside the oven, uh, which drives the heating elements, which are just basically power resistors, on the circuit board in, in the oven. And then there is Q9, which is actually in the oven, and that's driven directly from a thermistor. The unit wasn't working. I thought, well, okay, there's a thermal fuse inside the unit. We'll check that first. And I checked that, and it was open circuit. And in fact, when I pulled it off the board, it just fell into pieces. So that obviously had to be changed. But then you think, well, the th thermal fuse is blown. Why is it blown? You know, it's a thing that's not going to fail unless something has caused it to fail. Well, looking around the circuit, I found that the Q9 transistor, which drives this output transistor here, it was a, a different type. According to the HP manual, it's an HP part number 1854-0087. And after looking through various HP component lists that I have, it's a 2N3417. The transistor that was in there was an MPS3391, which for all intents and purposes probably is close. It's an NPN transistor, but there are differences. It's got a higher gain, it's got lower operating voltages. However, what had happened was that the fuse had blown. And when testing, just replacing the fuse with a link, temporarily and monitoring the temperature of the circuit found that it would just go up uncontrollably and in fact I let it go as far as about 115 degrees C which was still sort of okay but it was past the point where the thermal fuse would have blown so I knew that that condition of the circuit was what caused the thermal fuse to blow. This is the circuit schematic of the oven controller used in the HP 3300A. And it's quite a simple schematic. What we have is the thermistor here, which senses the temperature within the oven. We have R17, which sets the temperature set point that the controller works at. We've got control amplifier Q9 and that the output of that goes through this biasing network which then goes to the oven amplifier Q7 which is mounted on the chassis for heat sinking and then the collector of Q7 goes into a series parallel combination of re power resistors that are located on the circuit board in the oven and they obviously uh, heat the oven and then finally we've got fuse F1 which is a thermal fuse that at about 107 degrees C will blow so uh, at well over the nominal operating temperature to protect the componentry in the oven this fuse will blow if the circuit fails for any reason. So what we have though, one would think, oh it's just a, a fairly simple bang bang controller, so it's either off or on. So when you're below the set point temperature, this transistor biases up the oven amplifier transistor to turn on the load and heat the oven and it'll get past 
the set point temperature and it turns off and this will oscillate around the set point decreasing uh, basically a decreasing oscillation because you've got thermal lag in the system and there'd be some hysteresis there so that's what you you would immediately assume just from a, a circuit like this but no HP were a bit more clever than that what they also included in this was a linear operation of this transistor so that rather than just being on or off at a very narrow band of temperatures basically around about plus and minus 0.2 of a degree C around the set point temperature this circuit goes into a linear region of operation so rather than it just being on uh, fully on and, and this point here being close to zero volts or fully off and it's close to 40 volts it then operates linearly within this very small range of temperatures so you actually have not all not full power and not zero power being applied to the to the load here so this simple trick of changing from a simple on off control to linear control close to the set point allows the circuit to give a finer control in the region close to the set point and therefore maintain the temperature more precisely so what this means is the control amplifier and this resistor are critical components in this circuit and any differences or any major differences uh, in either this transistor or this resistor will put the set point way outside of the operating range of the oven and that's what I found with the substitute MPS 3391 that had substantially different gain to the original 2N3417. After placing a, a new replacement 2N3417 in here and just let the system run, it actually stabilised at around about 85 degrees C, which is a bit higher than what was set in the original circuit. HP had a nominal operating range of somewhere between 70 and 80 degrees C for the oven. So the next step is to remove R17 and bring a couple of lead wires out so that I can hook into a decade box and adjust the set point for Q9 so that we'll get the set temperature within the range of 70 to 80 degrees C and also have the oven checkpoint value at approximately 20 volts. Now with the decade box set up over here going into the oven uh, replacing R17 and monitoring the collector of Q7 we have 72.6 degrees C and the voltage at the collector uh, of the oven heater element drive Q7 is uh, 20.5 volts. This value bounces around a fair bit. The 40 volt rail in here is not regulated, so any fluctuations in line voltage will actually cause this to move up and down even as much as a few volts. But nominally it's around about 20 volts and that's what we want so that's we know that the power that's being dissipated in the resistors in the oven is about what is nominal for the circuit and that gives us the 72.6 degrees C. Here we have the oven board A11 and uh, as you can see we've got a new oh, the replacement transistor in here that uh, is the correct part rather than the part that had been incorrectly replaced. We've got a new thermal fuse here and a resistor combination 
to allow us to set the temperature properly and these here as you can see are the power resistors that are used to, to actually heat the oven. So that's all ready now for a, a final test to make sure that everything comes up to temperature again correctly and then we can wrap the oven up and have at least that part of the repair completed. Previously when I was making measurements of temperature and adjusting the resistor value to set the set point I'd obviously made some error in the measurement and it appears that the the thermocouple here that I've been using to measure the temperature had actually slipped from underneath the thermistor inside the oven to underneath one of the power resistors giving me an incorrect reading of about five degrees higher than it, it should have been so after doing a few measurements with the original resistor and the new calculated resistor in place and the oven better closed up than it had been I came to the conclusion from calculation that adding 1K2 to the original 8K87 resistor that was in circuit would give me approximately 75 degrees C and be close to the 20 volts on the collector of Q7. And that's what I've done. I've put the original resistor back in with the series 1K2 and we've come up to 74.6 degrees C and we're hovering around about 19 volts or so and the unit seems to be functioning pretty normally and I don't really want to have to play around it, it the this voltage level is not that critical it just says in the manual and it's an approximate value and it does move around it moves around with line voltage and it moves around with slight fluctuations in temperature so it's not overly an issue for me as long as we're maintaining the temperature at a reasonably stable value, whatever that value is. And in this case, it's halfway between the 70 and 80 degrees C that they nominate as the operating temperature range in the manual. So this is now pretty much ready to finally wrap up and then I can do a an adjustment of the power supplies again and then we can go on and do a, a final calibration. While I'm testing this HP 3300A I've just now hooked up both outputs so that we can see that uh, we've got operation of each output and is correct. It does look like there is a bit of flattening on the sine wave at the bottom possibly but that will get picked up when we do one of the final tests to adjust the sine sh shaping circuit for minimum distortion. So for now we've got an issue with the low frequency settings. As we go to times one, there we've got absolutely nothing. And we just have to now sort out what, what the issue is.